Welcome to the breakdown. We break down all the messed up movies. I missed you guys. I was very busy and since I was gone for so long, I need to give you something strong in Bad Boy Bubby. Y'all have been telling me to do a video on Bad Boy Bubby ever since I started this channel. I see the movie on various disturbing lists and icebergs, so here we are. Bad Boy Bubby is directed by Rolf Deheer, starring Nicholas Hope as Bubby, a mentally challenged 35-year-old man who has been abused and raised by his mother. He has never been outside ever in his life. So when the opportunity presents itself, we find ourselves watching his grand adventure of self-discovery despite being socially inept and unaware of the consequences of his actions. Now this movie has gained some controversy regarding cats. The movie utilizes the corpse of a feral cat that was put down by an on-set vet. The custom for feral cats is to be put down in Australia and they use a cat that was sedated with a tranquilizer to appear dead. Film critic Mark Commode walked out of the screening for Bad Boy Bubby because of the supposed animal cruelty, which is funny because he seems to really like Cannibal Holocaust. Now this movie, to be honest, isn't really that disturbing. The most disturbing part is the first arc before Bubby leaves his home. After that, it's kinda a funny adventure where you're still kinda sad that he was raised away from society and by an abusive mother. But this movie had unique cinematography from various directors of photography and the sound design is unique in that there were two mics pasted in the wig above Bubby's ears to replicate exactly what he hears. So I love this movie and you can find it on Tubi right now, but if you wanna see what happens, including all the messages the parts stay tuned for the breakdown cue the gohan you know sometimes i wish i had an on and off button for facial hair grow when i want it to be still or you slow down now my skin surface will be uneven now this is bubby and his mother who still does everything for him even though he is 35 years old I suppose that Bubby is a big fan of titties, even when it comes from his mom. Bubby, you smell like Sheldon. Now Bubby lives with his mom in this dead, dry land of despair filled with roaches and captured cats. When he's not playing with that kitty, he's messing around with his mother's uh, incest. Bubby can't leave the house. Jesus will teabag him if he does. He can't even leave the chair. It's all toxic air out there. And she has to wear a mask like she's going out to collect supplies like that game 60 seconds. He stays sitting so long he's pissing all over himself. If this is the abuse he gets for peeing on himself, I wonder what she would do if he was just chilling on the couch or even went outside. It pains me to see the way he plays with this cat. He doesn't know any better. So cats come outside how come he doesn't need a gas mask because cats don't breathe according to mom she almost suffocates him demonstrating it but i think cats choosing to not breathe is only when they know they can't like when they are submerged so bubby will later kill the cat with cling wrap in the making of the movie this was a feral cat who was humanely put down Australia has a big problem with feral cats, so they are supposed to put them down when they are caught. And so the movie utilizes the corpse of this cat to show Bubby accidentally killing it with cling wrap. I'm gonna censor a dead animal, okay? I really don't want this video taken down. You wanna see it so bad? You can see it on Tubi. And so you see here Bubby playing with the corpse of that feral cat after it was put down on set. So yeah, this cat is real but it wasn't killed by suffocation while filming. Anyway, someone knocks on the door. That doesn't sound like Jesus. It's a man who knows Bubby's mother. He repeats what the man said behind the door to his mom when she gets back. This is Bubby's father who hasn't seen Bubby's mom in 35 years, the same amount of years that Bubby has been alive. He's never known he had a son and he already hates Bubby. He just got here and he's already ready to disown him. No more incest between mom and son, which is 
Very ideal, actually, that's a good. Just wish I didn't have to hear what they're doing. Now, Bubby is really good at impressions. First his mom, and then his dad. He's literally great at that. Like he sounds just like his dad as he grabs his mother's breasts. So she pretends he's attacking her when dad sees, and they have a fight to see who is the better dad. Bubby is kicked out of the house and gasps for air thinking it's all toxic. Hours later, they walk past him like he's not even there. First noticing that they don't need a gas mask and he destroys the home. After the two parents pass out drunk, Bubby wraps dad with a cling wrap and kills him. He does the same to his mother. So both of them are dead. And time passes with him in his rat phase. Bubby, it's time to visit the outside world. With this view right here, it looks like he's gonna go kill his big sister. You know, like Halloween. Maybe this is where Eraserhead took place. Bubby is finally outside, but his first view of other people is a bunch of wild idiots calling him derogatory names for homosexuals. But I think that was a little exciting for him. He realizes he doesn't need the gas mask and packs his bags for new adventures. Suddenly, he's walking and a lady runs out of her house like Michael Myers running after her. It's all kinds of crimes out here. It's like Gotham. It's time for a new dark night to rise. Only Bubby can be Australia's savior. Bubby is adventuring, coming across a choir of the Salvation Army, singing and unnerved by his sudden appearance. What a sensory experience this is. In this scene where they bring him inside to eat, we can hear everybody speaking. This is what Bubby is hearing. So you can really feel that this is a new thing for him. And Bubby has a lucky first night out. He has sexual intercourse with one of the Salvation Army ladies. He's quite the catch. The next day, I'm hyped. It's like, what are we doing today, Bubby? It's kind of cool. Now, he almost gets his prick cut off, but you might notice how the dreary camera is working in effect here. A new cinematographer was brought in for each new big scene. No more playing with little kids, Bubby. Now, honestly, Bubby is kind of smart in his own way. He has damn near perfect memory. I'm not talking about him just remembering that dog's bark. Like he remembered that dog's bark down to the decibel. Now this lady, she was really sweet. What a sweet lady. She realizes Bubby is mentally challenged and even gives him a ride, but he ruins it when he repeats what those assholes said to him back in the beginning, saying they're a tasteless quote to this cop and looks like the lady driving him didn't have any more patience for him. Still kind of her to give him a ride in the first place. Lucky for him, a rock and roll band are ready to pick up their fellow man and bring him on for free as they rock Adelaide. Unfortunately, this band isn't very popular yet. No customers at all for the whole night. Soon, Bubby sees that his dead mother and father are the first page news. The cling wrap killer. Bubby doesn't realize he's a wanted murderer. And there's a $50,000 reward for the cling wrap murderer. Now, the band love Bubby so much that they don't even turn him in. And they write a song called Bad Boy Bubby, which is quite lovely. So far, this movie, it's, just, it's not disturbing. The first part, yeah, but this kind of a vibe. I'm hype. I mean, the incest in the beginning, the abuse, and I kind of wish they didn't use the corpse of a cat at all. But so far, this movie is kind of cool. The band leave Bubby with some friends of theirs named Dan. Dan and Bubby go out to a fancy restaurant one day all cleaned up and dripping. He notices a lady with breasts that remind him of his mother. But unfortunately, Bubby has no social awareness and understanding of consequences. He's arrested after molesting the lady and put right into a jail cell. Bubby doesn't want to talk to the police officer and the next day is led away at the sound of bagpipes to another cell with a person sitting there. Unfortunately, this person rapes Bubby to the sound of the bagpipes. Soon, Bubby is released. I guess when all you do is repeat things other people said, you're good at not snitching on yourself. Soon he hears the sound of an organ playing and rushes inside the local church to watch this man play. 
The man hears Bubby talk about how Jesus is going to beat him brainless. And so the man drags him to a factory. This man is called the scientist in the credits. And that's because he's full on science nerd. He says, we don't live. Our atoms just move in such a way that give us identity. We don't die. Our atoms just rearrange themselves. The man tells Bubby to think God out of existence. It is the duty of all human beings to think God out of existence and take full responsibility for who we are. It's just the atoms moving around. Let them figure it out. Anyway, Bubby takes full on responsibility for himself by molesting another random lady in the street. Looks like he's good at recounting everything except that it is bad to touch women in the wrong places. So Bubby is all rejected now and somehow finds his way back home. He sees the white outline where his mom was coming to terms with the fact that she is gone forever. So Bubby is now in need of new confidence and he dresses as his father, regaining a new identity and purpose. Now it's right back out to the streets. He walks right into a pizza shop pretending to be his father now. I don't know why she reminds me of Elaine Bennis. Soon a random cat comes across Bubby. I wish random cats would trust me this much. Maybe I need to have a cat first. Sometime later he donates to this generous fellow and is led into a club where the rock band from earlier are playing. Recognizing them he walks towards them and even joins them on stage. Looks like his presence is well received. The band hands him a mic and he just starts recounting various phrases from other characters characters that he heard from all over the movie. Literally, he remembers every single thing anybody has ever said to him. People are loving it and even playing along with him. People love this better than the band. Like look at this awesome song cover or album cover. The band want Bubby to be in the band now. Fortunately, Bubby, still stuck in the identity of being his dad, wants to return to the cat instead of hanging with this crowd. Another bad news here, Bubby finds some local brats killing the stray cat he adopted. Narrative wise, you are about to see another dead cat. Filmmaking wise, this particular cat was given a tranquilizer, which makes it look dead. The cat was later adopted by a crew member after filming. Disappointed, Bubby later encounters a nurse taking care of people with cerebral palsy and other disabilities. Bubby can understand their vocalizations, even though they aren't speaking English. Like Rachel here is saying the nurse's name is Angel, and it actually is. Now this is literally the best possible place for Bubby. Finally, some people who realize that Bubby is mentally challenged and needs some help. The nurse Angel convinces Bubby to leave the pop persona behind and become his true self again. And as a reward, he gets to see Angel's breasts. Just like moms, he tells her. Now Bubby is still in that band. And for his perfect performance, he's even going to get in on some groupy action. The fool walks out because their breasts are too tiny for him, which is actually crazy because the one on the right here has breasts about as big as his mom's. Okay, this has gotten weird. But he doesn't want to do anything with anybody that isn't Angel, so I respect that. He brings her up on stage and fondles her live. Great big whopper of things they are. Now I start shedding tears when Bubby had to reject Rachel here. Oh my gosh, what an awkward love triangle this was. Afterwards, Bubby is about to meet Angel's parents, strict lovers of Jesus and God, just like his old mom and dad. Unfortunately, Angel's parents are very rude. They literally start insulting her for being fat and her own mother calls her gross and ugly. I find fat people so, so gross. So unfortunate, of course, but so ugly. Better he know that she's a fat slut. God doesn't like fat people. Fat people are an abomination <laughs> in his eyes. Fuck you, God. Strike me down if you dare. He goes outside to get some cling wrap and murders them off screen. Angel isn't mad. She thinks they should have died a long time ago and even lists various reasons why they were gonna die anyway. They were put out of their misery, she calls it. 
Next, Bubby listens to a man talk about the various religions and how despite religions being so peaceful, they have done their fair share of killing. He tells Bubby to not kill ever again. Nobody is missing anybody he has killed, I guess. Soon, there is another performance for the big rock band and everybody is screaming, where be pop? The band wearing cling wrap mask and Bubby himself taking over with his wild vocalizing in quotes. He's the lead vocalist for this song about big tits. The movie ends with Bubby surrounded by his fans and next to Angel. They soon have a child of their own and after that they have many more kids. I'm sure Bubby has made considerable progress in becoming socially compatible with the rest of society. The end that was one of my favorite movies to watch i loved it i love the search for identity and the funny little situations he would find himself in and how some things worked out for him like i said it started disturbing got really almost wholesome by the end let's talk about the most disturbed moment the most enjoyed moment in bad boy bubby Most disturbed moment is just the entire beginning, from when we see his abusive mother all the way to when he kills them. After that, the movie became something entirely different. Perhaps the different cinematographers helped capture that different feeling. In the beginning, the movie was almost depressing, but soon became the dark comedy it was known for. Most enjoyed moment is personally for me, when Bubby is helping out the nurses and the other kids. Like it was funny how he could understand their grunts and even having to reject Rachel here. It was all cute and funny. And he met his wife here who helped him communicate better. So I thought it was an interesting touch to the movie. So overall, I thought it was a good movie. I'm going to remember it deeply. I do think they could have just avoided the dead cat imagery overall. I mean, it wasn't technically animal cruelty, but it is what it is. Want to see another movie about cats? Check out The Cat, a South Korean horror movie about a lady trying to stop spirits from attacking her. Or you could check out The Sadness if you want to watch the goriest Taiwanese movie of all time. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys soon. Spooky out.